Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make a drop down list that is searchable without having to use any VBA. Now before I get going this will only work for people who are on the most up to date version of Office 365, the version that has XLOOKUP and XMATCH in. So here's the problem that we have at the moment. I've got a basic drop down list and if I go into it you'll see it's really really long because it contains this 70 odd items that I've got over on the left hand side here. If I try to just type in C and H as an example, when I press the drop down, you'll see I'm getting told that it's not an item that's on the list. Whereas if I go to my more dynamic way that I've done it, you again see I get that, that big list. But if I click into here and put C and H in, when I press the drop down, you'll see it's returning me only items that have C and H in their name. Okay, so the way that I did that was to first of all, if I put C and H in that box, was to make a formula called search. So search will look for something. So in this case, it's the C and H within a set of cells. So I'm going to select from A2 through to A79. And when I close my bracket now and press enter, you'll see that it gives me the word value if it doesn't find it. And when it does find it, it gives us the starting position of where C and H is so far. These ones here, it's at the beginning. For this one here, it's the fifth character in. Okay, so we've now got that. What I'm now going to do is convert that into a more of a logical statement. So I'm going to use the is number. And this will then convert those values to the word false. And it will convert the numbers to the word true. So to then use that to generate our list, I'm going to put that within a new formula called filter. So with filter, we give it an array. So I'm going to highlight from A2 to A79 again, 78, sorry, again. The is number, remember, is returning true and false. So that will get it to return only the true items. So if I close my bracket now, that's given me all of the entries where there is C and H. The problem is if I put something in that isn't in the list, it doesn't seem to be, sorry, doing it in the wrong cell. Let me do it in this one. It then gives me this hash calc. What I want instead is I want something more meaningful. I want something that an end user would know. I've put, I've put something that isn't on the list. So if I go back to my formula, at the end of my filter, you'll see I can put an if empty, and I'm going to put, inside of speech marks, not on list. So now, instead of getting that hash calc, I get not on the list. Okay. So... If I now make this into a drop down and go to data, data validation, pick the option of a list, and then for my source, I'm going to reference L2. Now, if I put the hash symbol at the end, that makes it look at it as an array. And if I press OK at the moment, that's giving me the full list. And if I go back and put CH in, when I press the drop down, I get an error message. Now to sort that problem out, if I cancel this and I go back to my drop down on my data validation, what I need to do is on the alert for the error, I need to take that out. So now if I put my C and H in, that allows it to run the formula, which then 
generates the drop down list. So now, without any VBA whatsoever, we have a drop down list that is dynamic. That if I change it, so let's go for G and U, now gives me the drop down. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, can you give me a thumbs up? And if you want to see more videos from me, remember to press the subscribe button and press the notification bell as well. That way you'll be notified when I do a new video. I plan to do two videos a week on various Microsoft topics. Most of them, I will be honest, because I like Excel, are based on Excel. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.